Hello and welcome to the Law of Creation of Energy uh, YouTube channel. Uh, in this uh, YouTube channel we will be introducing the Law of Creation of Energy which was originally discovered in 1820 by Hans Christian Osted and um, the when uh, uh, Professor Osted used created electromagnetic field energy to increase the kinetic energy uh, of a compass needle or to perform positive work on a compass needle. So, uh, and the law of creation of energy was misunderstood in 1820. It was usurped by the Newtonian uh, uh, mechanics physicists of the day and it has been um, hidden I suppose or misunderstood uh, and it was has been um, uh, been ignored by uh, Newtonian physicists that uh, adhere to the theory of conservation of energy which says that energy cannot be created or destroyed and the law of creation of energy says that energy can be uh, created and absorbed. So what does the law of creation of energy says say? The law of creation of energy explains how electromagnetic field energy is created at the subatomic quantum electron level via electron fission and electron fusion in every current bearing wire and um, how this uh, created energy can be harnessed to perform any magnitude of positive or negative work at infinite efficiency. So uh, created electromagnetic field energy has been performing uh, unlimited amounts essentially of negative work in every Faraday generator in eight, since 1834. And what we're going to do in this video demonstration is we're going to show and demonstrate how created electromagnetic field energy can now be used to perform unlimited amounts of positive work at infinite efficiency by delaying the creation of the electromagnetic field energy in the time domain. So unlimited amounts of electromagnetic field energy is currently being created at the subatomic quantum electron level via electron fission and electron fusion when an electromotive force or voltage is applied to a current bearing wire in a closed circuit such that electric current can flow in the circuit. Electrons are forced out of their valence orbit, the outermost orbit, via electron fission and they cascade within the wire as electric current. When the unstable electrons drop back down and return back to their valence orbits via electron fusion, they emit photons which create and constitute the electromagnetic field energy around the current bearing wire. Created electromagnetic field photon energy has been performing all the negative work in every Faraday generator at infinite efficiency according to the law of creation of energy since 1834. That's when Michael Faraday invented the, the Faraday generator and when he formulated uh, um, Faraday's law of induction. It's also the same year that Emile Lenz formulated Lenz's law of induction in order to explain the negative work that's being performed 
by the created electromagnetic field energy. So, created electromagnetic field energy has been performing all the positive work, all the positive, all the negative work in every Faraday generator since 1834, and all the positive work in every Regenex generator and Regenex quantum motor since 2007 while simultaneously violating Newton's, Newton's first law of motion, Newton's third law of motion, the first law of thermodynamics, and the theory of conservation of energy. And uh, so here we have a graphic of an electric vehicle that uses uh, created electromagnetic field energy in order to perform negative work and negative work means whenever you have negative work being performed the kinetic energy of the system is decreasing and uh, the regenerative acceleration innovation it performs positive work and increases the kinetic energy of the vehicle so in both cases uh, energy is required to perform negative work because the work energy principle states that um, in order for work to be form, performed, uh, energy is required. And uh, so in order, and the same thing applies for positive work, energy is required to perform positive work. So in an electric vehicle, the vehicle's kinetic energy performs positive work on the generator and in the regenerative acceleration vehicle the same thing happens. The vehicle's kinetic energy performs positive work on the generator, meaning that it, it accelerates the generator. The Faraday generator performs negative work and it decelerates the EV when it's recharging the batteries. The Regenex generator performs positive work and it accelerates the EV when it's recharging the batteries. The more recharge power uh, delivered to the batteries, the more negative work is performed and the more the EV is decelerated. So EV regenerative braking. In the EV regenerative accel acceleration example, the more recharge power delivered to the batteries, the more the EV is accelerated. EV driving range is limited by battery storage capacity, and in the regenerative acceleration unit, EV driving range is limited by the size and the uh, output power capacity of the regenerative acceleration unit. So if uh, if this was a Nissan Leaf, for example, and a Nissan Leaf requires 20 kilowatts at 100 kilometers an hour, if you wanted to produce an e uh, a Nissan Leaf that does not require plug-in recharging, then you introduce or you produce you, you integrate a 30 kilowatt uh, regenerative acceleration unit into your Nissan Leaf, and you you're eliminating plug-in recharging. So here we have this schematic diagram for prototype number one that we're going to be demonstrating and this is the patent for prototype number one and I'll put that in the description box along with the link so you can you can read it if you want the uh, what we have is a power analyzer and, and an induction motor prime mover and we have uh, an e core um, uh, sorry an e core uh, generator coil which includes a conventional generator coil and two uh, regenex generator coils and the conventional generator coil is connected to a light bulb and the uh, Regenex generator coils are connected to the same light bulb. 
And we're, what we want to see is we want to look at the load current time delay for the Regenx generator coil, which produces positive work, system acceleration, and allows the conventional generator coil to generate electricity at infinite efficiency, which means no additional uh, uh, mechanical power is being supplied to the generator's drive shaft by the prime mover, and no additional input power consumption is going to the prime mover when the Regenx generator is placed on load. So uh, we're going to bring the system up to rotational equilibrium, a speed of about 3500 RPM. The drive shaft torque at rotational equilibrium is zero newton meters. The drive shaft power is the torque times the speed, and because the torque is zero, the mechanical power in the drive shaft is going to be zero watts, zero mechanical watts. The prime mover power consumption is going to be about 168 watts, and the rotational kinetic energy of the system is going to be 200, sorry, 2486 joules. And the rotational kinetic energy is important because if the speed goes down or if the speed goes up, if the kinetic energy of the system increases or decreases, then by calculating the increase, we, we know, we can then determine how much energy is being created, how much electromagnetic field energy is being created in order to perform that positive or negative work. So this is the schematic for the Regenx generator coil that's in prototype number one. It includes two Regenx generator coils and one uh, conventional generator coil. When the conventional generator coil is placed on load, when it's uh, powering the light bulb, it will be operating according to Faraday's, or sorry, uh, Lenz's law of induction. Uh, where the created electromagnetic field energy around the generator coil performs negative work on the approaching magnet and negative work on the magnet when it's moving, moving away from the coil. The Regenx generator coils, on the other hand, they perform positive work according to Heinz's law of induction and they perform uh, positive work and create a complementary electromagnetic torque which assists the approach of the rotor's magnetic field and uh, assists in the, in the rotor magnet's departure. And on the oscilloscope we'll see the load current sine wave for the conventional coil It'll be in yellow, and then we'll see the load current sine wave for the time delayed uh, Regenx generator coils, which uh, when you delay the load current, you delay the creation of the electromagnetic field because the two of them are, are linked. So what you will also notice uh, in the operation of the Regenx prototype number one, we'll be demonstrating the first law of thermodynamics for all Faraday generators, which means that the more work that's performed by the Faraday generator, the more uh, energy is required to be supplied to the generator, and the more the more energy is required to be supplied to the prime mover and the more heat is produced in the prime mover. 
And so the net, the net change in total energy equals the heat added to the system minus the work uh, performed by the system. Whereas with the RegenX generator, the net change in total energy is equal to the heat subtracted by the prime mover. What you'll see with the RegenX generator, the more work it performs, the, the more uh, energy it supplies, electrical energy it supplies to the light bulb, the less energy is required to the prime mover, which means the prime mover is getting cooler the more the RegenX generator performs um, electrical work. In fact, I should have mentioned that the the, elect, the created electromagnetic field energy around the Regex generator coils, the two of them, they perform two types of work. They perform positive work, increasing the speed of rotation of the rotating magnetic field, and the created electromagnetic field energy is fed into the conventional coil's core such that the additional um, electric power is generated through the load. So when the RegenX generators are placed on load, the power across the, the power that's being dissipated through the load is going to go up and the speed of the system is going to go up, meaning we're using created electromagnetic field energy twice, once to accelerate the system, and the second time to increase the power through the load. So that's why the more work that's done in the RegenX generator, the less energy and heat is dissipated in the prime mover, which if you're looking at the CO2 produced globally, it takes us from here with a, with a potential direction here down to here, where the more, the more energy that's generated by a regenx generator, the less input energy is required by the prime mover, the less coal, the less uh, natural gas, the less diesel, and the less CO2 is produced. So, this is the performance data for prototype number one. Uh, we're going to bring the system up to a no load speed of about 3500 RPM. The input power consumption of the prime mover will be 168 watts. The power in the drive shaft will be zero watts, and then we'll put the conventional generator on load. The speed will drop by 20 RPM. The load power will be about 9.65 watts, and the input to the prime mover will increase to 188 watts. So about uh, an additional 20 watts of consumption to generate our 9.65 watts from the generator and uh, the uh, kinet final kinetic energy of the uh, conventional generator will be minus 28 joules and which means the negative work is being performed kinetic energy is reduced and the energy required to perform 28 joules of negative work is 28 joules and the energy created in order to perform the 28 joules of negative work is 28 joules of created electromagnetic field energy. So the RegenX generator uh, it's going to deliver more power 11.2 watts and the, uh, the speed of the system will go up and the prime mover consumption will go down to less than what was required at idle on no load. The regen coil number two 
will do the same thing only additionally and um, it'll produce more power and um, the Regenex coil number one will harness six joules of created electromagnetic field energy to increase the kinetic energy uh, by six joules, 12 joules, and then when we're using the Regenex generator coils as quantum motor coils, they will increase the system, they will harness 31 joules of created electromagnetic field energy in order to increase the speed by 22 RPM and increase the kinetic energy of the system by 31 joules. Again, the increase or decrease in the kinetic energy of the system is equal to the work performed on the system, which is equal to the energy required to perform that work. So because the energy is internally created, um, it's, uh, we're, we're measuring the magnitude of the created energy by, by, by uh, calculating the increase or decrease in kinetic energy of the system. Okay, so I'll fire up the system and then we'll run through the conventional uh, generators and you can watch the meters and um, hopefully everything makes sense. the current and the voltage through our uh, load and uh, here we have the load current side wave for the conventional coil and the regenx coil This is the prime mover consumption uh, for the induction motor. So at rotational equilibrium, on no load, the prime mover requires 158 watts to idle the system. So now I'm going to place the conventional generator on load and we're going to see the input to the prime mover increase we're going to hear the speed go down and uh, basically we're we are observing uh, Lenz's law of induction So let's take a note of our prime mover input, 158 watts, and uh, when I place the Regen X coil, the conventional coil on load, it should go up by about 20 watts. And when I place the Regen X generator on load, this will be less than 158 watts. It will be about 156, which means the um, prime mover is consuming less energy, it's producing less heat, and the Regen X generator is violating the first law of thermodynamics, whereas the conventional generator is proving the first law of thermodynamics. So we're delivering 10.17 volts across our load, 0.87 amps, and our prime mover consumption has gone up to 
178 watts, and we are we're operating according to Lenz's law of induction. We are uh, operating according to the first law of thermodynamics. Our prime mover is uh, is consuming additional input energy, and it is uh, generating more heat. And I'll put the Regen X generator on load. Pay attention to this number, which will go down. 